Welcome to the Thousand Nights and One Night. Now, when it was the 725th night, she pursued. It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that the old woman charged the king's son, saying, I will let thee know two days beforehand of the king's daughter going down to the garden. Do thou hide thee in some place or another, and when thou espiest her, come forth and show thyself to her. When she seeth thee, she will fall in love with thee, for thou art fair to look upon, and love covereth all things. So keep thine eyes cool and clear, and be of good cheer. O my son, for needs must I bring about union between thee and her. The young prince kissed her hand and thanked her, and gave her three pieces of Alexandrian silk, and three of satin of various colors, with each piece linen for ships and stuff for trousers, and a kerchief for the turban, and fine white cloth of baobok for the linings, so as to make her six complete suits, each handsomer than its sister. Moreover, he gave her a purse containing six hundred gold pieces, and said to her, This is for the tailoring. She took the whole and said to him, O oh, my son, art thou not pleased to acquaint me with thine abiding place, and I also will show thee the way to my lodging? Yes, answered he, and sent a mameluke with her to note her home, and show her his own home. Then he rose, and bidding his slaves shut the shop, went back to the wazir to whom he related all that had passed between him and the old woman from first to last. Quoth the minister, O oh, my son, should the princess Hyatt al Nufas come out and look upon thee, and thy find no favour with her, what wilt thou do? Quoth Ardashir, There will be nothing left but to pass from words to deeds, and risk my life with her, for I will snatch her up from amongst her attendants, and set her behind me on a swift horse, and make for the wildest of the world. If I escape, I shall have won my wish, and if I perish, I shall be at rest from this hateful life rejoined the minister o my son dost thou think to do these things and live how shall we make our escape seeing that our country is far distant and how wilt thou deal thus with the king of the king of the ages who hath under his hand an hundred thousand horse nor can we be sure that he will dispatch some of his troops to cut off our way verily there is no good in this project which no wise man would attempt asked ardashire then how well we do it, O wazir of good counsel, for unless I win her, I am a dead man without a chance. The minister answered, Wait till tomorrow, when we will visit this garden, and note its condition, and see what betideth us with the caretaker. So, when the morning morrowed, they took a thousand dinars and a poke, and repairing to the garden, found it compassed about with high walls, and strong, rich, and trees, and real fill leaves, and good fruiteries. And indeed, its flowers breathed perfume, and its birds warbled amid the bloom as it were a garden of the gardens of paradise. Within the door sat a sheikh, an old man on a stone bench, and they saluted him. When he saw them and noted the fairness of their favor, he rose to his feet after returning their salute and said, O oh, my lords, perchance ye have a wish which may have the honor of satisfying? replied the wazir. Know, O elder, that we are strangers, and the heat hath overcome us. Our lodging is afar off at the other end of the city, so we desire of thy courtesy that thou take these two dinars and buy us somewhat of Provence, and open us meanwhile the door of this flower garden, and seat us in some shaded place where there is cold water, that we may cool ourselves there, against thou return with the provisions, when we will eat, and thou with us. And then rested and refreshed we shall wend our ways." So saying, he pulled out his pouch, a couple of dinars, and put them in the keeper's hand. Now this caretaker was a man aged threescore and ten, who had never in all his life possessed so much money. So when he saw the two dinars in his hand, he was like to fly for joy, and rising forth with opened the garden gate to the prince and the wazir, and made them enter and sit down under a wide-spreading, fruit-laden, shade-affording tree, saying, Sit ye here, and go no further into the garden, for it hath a privy door communicating with the palace of the princess Hyatt al Nufas. They replied, We will not store hence. Whereupon he went out to buy what they had ordered, and returned after a while, with a porter bearing on his head a roasted lamb and bread. They ate and drank together, and talked a while, till presently the wazir, looking about him in all corners right and left, 
caught sight of a lofty pavilion at the farther end of the garden. But it was old, and the plaster was peeled from its walls, and its buttresses were broken down. So he said to the gardener, O oh, Sheikh, is this garden thine own, or dost thou hire it? And he replied, I am neither owner nor tenant of the garden, only its caretaker. Ask the minister, and what is thy wage? Whereto the old man answered, A dinar a month. And quoth the wazir, Verily they wrong thee, especially an thou have a family. Quoth the elder, By Allah, O my lord, I have eight children, and I— The wazir broke in. There is no majesty, and there is no might, save in Allah, the glorious, the great. Thou makest me bear thy grief, my poor fellow. What wouldst thou say of him who should do thee a good turn on an account of this family of thine? Replied the old man, O my lord, whatsoever good thou dost shall be garnered up on thee with God the Most High. Thereupon said the wazir, O sheikh, thou knowest this garden of thine to be a goodly place, but the pavilion yonder is old and ruinous. Now I mean to repair it, and stucco it anew, and paint it handsomely, so it will be the finest thing in the garden. And when the owner comes and finds the pavilion restored and beautified, he will not fail to question thee concerning it. Then do thou say, O my lord, at great expense I set it in repair, for that I saw it in ruins, and none could make use of it, nor could any one sit therein. And he says, Whence hast thou the money for this? Reply. I spent my own money upon the stucco, thereby thinking to whiten my face with thee, and hoping for thy bounties. And that it must be recompensed thee fairly over the extent of thine expenses. To-morrow I will bring builders and plasters and painters to repair this pavilion, and will give thee what I promise thee. Then he pulled out of his purse a poke of five hundred dinars, and gave it to the gardener, saying, Take these gold pieces, and expend them upon thy family, and let them pray for me, for this is my son. Thereupon the prince asked the wazir, What is the meaning of all this? And he answered, Thou shalt presently see the issue thereof. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased to say her permitted say. Now, when it was the seven hundred and twenty-sixth night, she resumed, it hath reached me, O auspicious king, that when the wazir gave five hundred ducats to the old gardener, saying, Take these gold pieces, and expend them upon thy family, and let them pray for this my son, the old man looked at the gold, and his wits fled. So he fell down at the wazir's feet, kissing them and invoking blessings on him and his son. And when they went away, he said to them, I shall expect you to-morrow, for by Allah Almighty there must be no parting between us night or day. Next morning, the wazir went to the prince's shop and sent for the syndicate of the builders. Then he carried him and his men to the garth, where the gardener rejoiced in their sight. He gave them the price of rations and what was needful to the workmen for the restoration of the pavilion, and they repaired it and stuccoed it and decorated it. Then said the minister to the painters, Hark ye, my masters, listen to my words and apprehend my wish and my aim. Know that I have a garden like this, where I was sleeping at, my, at one night among the nights, and saw in a dream a fowler set of nets, and sprinkled corn thereabout. The birds flocked to pick up the grain, and a cockbird flew into the net, whereupon the others took fright and flew away, and amongst the rest his mate. But after a while she returned alone and picked at the mesh that held his feet till they set him free, and they flew away together. Now the fowler had fallen asleep, and when he awoke, he found the net empty. So he mended it, and strewing fresh grain, sat down afar, awaiting for game to fall into that snare. Presently the birds assembled again to pick up the grains, and amongst the rest, two pigeons. By and by the hen bird fell into the net, when all the other birds took fright at her, and flew away, and her husband flew with them, and did not return. Whereupon the fowler came up, and taking the quarry, cut her throat. Now when her mate flew away with the others, a bird of raven seized him, and slew him, and ate his flesh, and drank his blood. And I would have you portray me in the presentment of this my dream, even as I have related it to you in the liveliest colors, laying the fair scene in this rare garden, with its walls, and trees, and rills, and dwell especially on the fowler and the falcon. If you do this, I have set forth for you, and the work please me, I will give you what shall gladden your hearts over and above your wages. 
The painters, hearing these words, applied themselves with all diligence to do what he required of them, and wrought it out in masterly style. And when they had made an end of the work, they showed it to the wazir, who, seeing his so-called dream set forth as it was, was pleased, and thanked them, and rewarded them munificently. Presently the prince came in, according to his custom, and entered the pavilion, unweeding what the wazir had done. So when he saw the portraiture of the fowler and the birds in the net, and beheld the male pigeon and the clutches of the hawk which had slain him, and was drinking his blood and eating his flesh, his understanding was confounded, and he returned to the minister and said, O wazir of good counsel, I have seen this day a marvel which were it graven with needle gravers on the eye corners would be a warner to those who will be warned. Asked the minister, And what is that, O my lord? And the prince answered, did I not tell thee of the dream of the princess, had and how it was the cause of her hatred of men? Yes, replied the wazir, and Ardashir rejoined, By Allah, O minister, I have seen the whole dream portrayed in painting, as I had eyed it with mine own eyes, but I found there in a circumstance which was hidden from the princess, so that she saw it not, and tis upon this that I rely for the winning of my wish. Quoth the wazir, And what is that, O my son? and the quoth of the prince, I saw that when the male bird flew away, and leaving his mate entangled in the net, failed to return and save her, a falcon pounced on him, and slaying him, ate his flesh and drank his blood. Would to heaven the princess had seen the whole dream, and had beheld the cause of the failure of his return to rescue her, replied the wazir. By Allah, O auspicious king, this is indeed a rare thing, and a wonderful and the king's son ceased not to marvel at the picture, and lament that the king's daughter had not beheld the dream at its end, saying in itself, Would she had seen it at the last, or might see the whole over again, though but in the imbroglio of sleep? Then quoth the wazir to him, Thou saidest to me, Why wilt thou repair the pavilion? And I replied, Thou shalt presently see the issue thereof, and behold, now its issue thou seest, for it was I did this deed, and bade the painters portray the princess's dream thus, and paint the male bird in the pounces of the falcon, which eateth his flesh, and drinketh his blood, so that when she cometh to the pavilion, she will behold her dream depicted, and see how the cock pigeon was slain, and excuse him, and turn from her hate from men. When the prince heard the wazir's words, he kissed his hands, and thanked him, saying, Verily, the like of thee is fit to be a minister to the most mighty king. And by Allah, and I win my wish and return to my sire rejoicingly. I will assuredly acquaint him with this, that he may redouble in honoring thee, and advance thee in dignity, and hearken to thine every word. So the wazir kissed his hand, and they both went to the old gardener and said, Look at yonder pavilion, and see how fine it is. And he replied, this is all of your happy thought. Then, said they, O oh, elder, when the owners of the place question thee concerning the restoration of the pavilion, say thou, Twas I did it of my own monies, to the intent that there may betide thee fair favor and good fortune. He said, I hear, and I obey. And the prince continued to pay him frequent visits. Such was the cause with the prince and the wazir. But as regards, hide only foss, when she ceased to receive the prince's letters and messages, and when the old woman was absent from her, she rejoiced with joy exceedingly, and concluded that the young man had returned to his own country. One day there came to her a covered tray from her father, so she uncovered it, and finding therein fine fruits, asked her waiting woman, Is this the season these fruits come in? Answered they, Yes. Thereupon she cried, Would we might make ready to take our pleasure in the flower garden? and Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased to say her permitted say. When it was the seven hundred and twenty-seventh night, she said, it hath reached me, O auspicious king, that the princess, after receiving the fruit from her sire, asked, Is the season of these fruits set in? And they answered, Yes. Thereupon she cried, 
would we might make ready to take our pleasure in the flower garden. Oh, my lady, they replied, thou sayest well, and by Allah, we also long for the garden. So she inquired, how shall we do, seeing that every year it is none save my nurse who taketh us to walk in the garden, who have pointed out to us the various trees and plants, and I have beaten her and forbidden her from me. Indeed, I repent me of what done by me to her, for that in my age and case, and she is my nurse, and hath over me the right of fosterage. But there is no majesty, and there is no might, save in all of the glorious, the great. When her handmaids heard this, they all sprang up, and kissing the ground between her hands, exclaimed, Allah upon thee, O my lady, do thou pardon her, and bid her into thy presence. And quoth she, By Allah. I am resolved upon this, but which of you will go to her, for I have prepared her a splendid robe of honor? Hereupon the two damsels came forward by name, Bulbul and Swit al Ain, who were comely and graceful in the principles among the princess women and her favorites. And they said, We will go to her, O king's daughter. And she said, Do what seemeth good to you. So they went to the house of the nurse, and knocked at the door, and entered. And she recognized the twain, and received them with open arms, and welcomed them. When they had said a while with her, they said to her, O oh, nurse, the princess pardoneth thee, and desireth to take thee back into favor. She replied, This may never be, though I drink the cup of ruin. Hast thou forgotten how she put me to shame before those who loved me, and those who hate me, and when my clothes were dyed with my blood? And I well nigh died for the stress of beating. After this, they dragged me forth by the feet like a dead dog and cast me without the door. So by Allah, I will never return to her, nor fill my eyes with her sight, quoth the two girls. Disappoint not our pains in coming to thee, nor send us away unsuccessful. Where's thy courtesy, us words? Think but who it is that cometh in to visit thee. Canst thou wish for any higher of standing than we with the king's daughter? She replied, I take refuge with Allah. Well, I wot that my station is less than yours, were it not that the princess's favor exalted me above all her women, so that were I wrought with the greatest of them, she had died in her skin of fright. They rejoined, All is as it was, and not is in any wise changed. Indeed, tis better than before, for the princess humbleth herself to thee, and seeketh a reconciliation without in the mediary. Said the old woman, by Allah, were it not for your presence in the intercession with me, I had never returned to her. No, not though she had commanded to slay me. They thanked her for this, and she rose and dressing herself, accompanied them to the palace. Now, when the king's daughter saw her, she sprang to her feet in honor, and the old woman said, Allah, Allah, O king's daughter, say me, whose was the fault, mine or thine? Hyatt al Nufas replied, The fault was mine, and tis thine to pardon and forgive. By Allah, O oh my nurse, thy rank is high with me, and thou hast over me the right of fosterage. But thou knowest that Allah, extolled and exalted he be he, hath allotted to his creatures four things, disposition, life, daily bread, and death. Nor is it in man's power to avert that which is decreed. Verily, I was beside myself and could not recover my senses. But, O oh my nurse, I repent of what deed I did with this. The crone's anger ceased from her, and she rose and kissed the ground before the princess, who called for a costly robe of honor and threw it over her, whereat she rejoined with exceeding joy in the princess, presence of the princess's slaves and women. When it all ended thus happily, Hayat al-Nufas said to the old woman, O oh my nurse, how go to the fruits and growths of our garden? And she replied, O oh my lady, I see excellent fruits in the town. But I will inquire of this matter, and return to thee, and answer this very day. Then she withdrew, honored with all honor, and betook herself to Ardashir, who served her with open arms, and embraced her, and in rejoiced in her coming, for that he had expected her long and lovingly. She told her all that had passed between herself and the princess, and how our mistress was minded to go down into the garden on such a day. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased to say her permitted say. Now, when it was the seven hundred and twenty-eighth night, she continued, It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that the old woman betook herself to the prince, and told him all that had passed between them, 
and the princess Hyatt al Nufas, and how her mistress was minded to go down into the garden on such a day, and said to him, Hast thou done as I bade thee with the warder of the garden, and hast thou made him to taste of the bounties? He replied, Yes, and the oldster has become my good friend. My way is his way, and he would well I had need of him. Then he told her all that had happened, and of the dream paintings which the wazir had caused to be limed into the pavilion, especially of the fowler, the net, and the falcon, whereat she joyed with great joy, and said, Allah upon thee, do thou set thy minister midmost in thy heart, for this that he hath done pointed to the keenness of his wit, and he hath helped thee to the winning thy wish. So rise forthwith, O my son, and go to the hammond bath, and don thy daintiest dress, wherein may be our success. Then fare thou to the gardener, and make shift to pass the night in the garden, for though he should give the earth full of gold, none may win to pass into it, whilst the king's daughter is therein. When thou hast entered, hide thee where no eye may espy thee, and keep concealed till thou hear me cry. O thou whose boons are hidden, save us from that we fear. Then come forth from thine ambush, and walk among the trees, and show thy beauty and loveliness, which puts the moons to shame, to the intent that Princess Hyatt al Nufas may see thee, and that her heart and soul may be filled with love of thee, so shalt thou attain thy wish, and thy grief be gone. To hear is to obey, replied the young prince, and he gave her a purse of a thousand dinars, which she took and went away. Thereupon Ardashir fared straight for the bath and washed, after which he arrayed himself in the richest of robes of the apparel of the kings of the Kosros, and girt his middle with a girdle wherein were conjoined all manner of precious stones, and donned a turban interwoven with red gold and purfled with pearls and gems. His cheeks shone rosy red, and his lips were scarlet. His eyelids, like the gazelles wantoned, like a wine struck white in his gait. He swayed beauty and loveliness, garbed him, and his shape shamed the bowing of the bow. Then he put his pocket a purse, containing a thousand dinars, and repairing to the flower garden, knocked at the door. The gardener t saw him and opened it, and rejoiced with great joy, salaamed to him in most worshipful fashion. Then observing that his face was overcast, he asked him how he did. The king said, Son said, No, O elder, that I am dear to my father, and he never laid his hand on me till this day. When words arose between us, and he abused me, and smote me on the face, and struck me with his staff, and drave me away. Now I have no friend to turn to, and I fear the perfidy of fortune, for thou knowest that the wrath of parents is no light thing. Wherefore, I come to thee, O uncle, seeing that to my father thou art known, and I desire of thy favor that thou suffer me abide in the garden till the end of the day, or pass the night there till all grant good understanding between myself and my sire. When the old man heard these words, he was concerned and meant what had occurred, and said, O oh my lord, dost thou give me leave to go to thy sire and be the means of reconciliation between thee and him? Replied Ardashir, O oh, uncle, thou must know that my father is of impatient nature, inerascible, so and thou proffer him reconciliation in his heart, his heat of temper, he will make thee no answer. But when a day or two shall have passed, his heat will soften. Then go thou into him, and thereupon he will relent. Hearkening and obedience, quoth Gardner. But, O oh my lord, do thou come with me to my house, where thou shalt night with my children and my family, and shalt none shall reproach this to thee. Quoth Ardisher, O oh, uncle, I must be alone when I am angry. The old man said, It irketh me that thou shouldest lie solitary in the garden when I have a house. But Ardashir said, O oh, uncle, I have an aim in this, that the trouble of my mind may be dispelled for me, and I know that in this lies the meanings of regaining his favor and softening his heart to me. Rejoined the gardener, I will fetch thee a carpet to sleep on, and a coverlet wherewith to cover thee. And the prince said, There is no harm in that, O oh, uncle. So the keeper rose and opened the garden to him, and brought him the carpet and coverlet, knowing not that the king's daughter was minded to visit the garden. On this wise fared it with the prince, but as regards the nurse, she returned to the princess and told her that the fruits were kindly ripe in the garden trees, 
Whereupon she said, Oh, my nurse, go down with me tomorrow into the garden that we may walk about in it and take our pleasure, inshallah, and send meanwhile to the gardener to let him know what we propose. So she said to the gardener to say, The princess will visit the party tomorrow, so leave neither water carriers nor tea trenchers therein, nor let one of Allah's creatures enter the garden. When word came to him, he set his waterways and channels in order, and going in to Ardashir said to him, O oh my lord, the king's daughter is mistress of this garden, and I have only to crave thy pardon for the place is thy place, and I live only in thy favours except that my tongue is under my feet. I must tell thee that the princess Hyatt al Nufas hath a mind to visit it to-morrow at the first of the day, and hath bidden me leave none therein who might look upon her. So I would have thee of thy favour go forth of the garden this day, for the queen will abide only in it till the time of mid-afternoon prayer, and after it it shall be at thy service for the night, fortnight, months, and years. Ardisher asked, O oh, elder, happily we have caused thee some mishap. And the other answered, By Allah, O oh my lord, naught hath betided me from thee but honour, rejoined the prince. And it be so, nothing at all good shall befall thee through us, for I will hide in the garden, and none shall espy me till the king's daughter hath gone back to her palace. Said the gardener, O oh my lord, and she espied the shadow of a man in the garden, or any of Allah's male creatures, she will strike off my head. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased saying her permitted say. And so do I, cease my telling of this tale, till it be morrow.